Now back to what's happening in Ukraine. A PSU professor says decades of peace and stability in Europe is now in the past and the war in Ukraine will change the direction of the continent for generations to come. But to understand what's happening now, we have to look at the past. Fox 12's Connor McCarthy spoke with that Portland State University professor about the history between Russia and Ukraine and joins us now live from the mobile newsroom with more. Connor. Well, Nora, this war in Ukraine may have started this week with a Russian invasion, but in reality, the two countries have been at war for many years. Now, since the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 1990s, the Ukrainian people have been trying to create an identity of itself away from Russia. Now, P Russian President Vladimir Putin doesn't like this, and he's been trying to do everything in his power to keep Ukraine from drifting more west and possibly joining NATO. But to understand the two countries, we have to go beyond the collapse of the Soviet Union and in NATO. We have to turn back the clock. Decades of peace in Europe ended this week with the Russian military invading Ukraine. Some of these geopolitical frictions and tensions are not being resolved right now, and it's occurring over Ukraine. Portland State Associate Professor of History Jun Yin Su says these geopolitical tensions have historical roots. They're not directly tied to the conflict between Ukrainians and Russians until fairly recently. They shared an origin, you might say. And at that period, there was no distinction between what was Russian or what was U Ukrainian. It was, there was just this term, Rus, mm -hmm. and that kind of refer to the state. The two nations' languages, religions, and culture all stem from a time period called the Kievian Rus. The city of Kiev, or Kiev, was the center of that area. Ukraine's capital, Kiev, dates back to that time. Russian identity was tied to the history of Kievian Rus. The idea of a Ukrainian identity began to form in the mid-19th century. It was the Soviet Union that actively fostered a Ukrainian identity at the mass level. They put money into promoting Ukrainian language, Ukrainian literature, Ukrainian press, and um, and also carried out what they, a, a policy that they called indigenization, which means that the leadership of the republic should be Ukrainians themselves. Putin sees this policy of pushing national identities in Soviet republics as a fatal flaw to the Soviet Union. The cultural similarities of Ukrainians and Russians may make it easier for Putin to justify an invasion to take control of parts of Ukraine, but this is not his real agenda. If um, Putin talks, I think he refers to Ukrainians as part of a family. Um, in some ways, that's literally true because many Russians have family in Ukraine and vice versa. The deeper problem here is NATO's expansion after the dissolve of the Soviet Union. Sue says NATO's expansion into former Warsaw Pact countries is seen as a security threat by the Russian government. The Russian government may claim a deep cultural ties to Ukraine, but Russia's geopolitical security concerns are the real issue for the war that's being fought in Ukraine now. Right now, it's a local conflict. It may not stay that way, and that's why we should care about it. Not only will it not stay that way, it can go nuclear. If not by intention, then by accident. Well, Wayne and Nora, those cultu cultural ties between Russia and the Ukraine are evident today. In a international media, you can see thousands of Russians protesting this war because many still have family members that live in the Ukraine. And, you know, some of those have told international media that seeing an invasion on the Ukraine is heartbreaking. And Connor, if these countries are so similar culturally, did she say why she thinks Putin would invade and put Ukrainians' lives at risk? Well, Nora, it all boils down to nuclear weapons, and there's also the threat of Ukraine joining NATO. But when it comes to nuclear weapons, you know, the Budapest Agreement back in the collapse of the Soviet Union actually pulled nuclear weapons out of Ukraine, which was an agreement between the West and Russia. But over the weekend during the Munich Security Conference, President Zelensky actually appealed to Western leaders asking to put um, nuclear weapons in it to Ukraine. And just think about it this way. Putin is concerned about having nuclear warheads so close to his borders. The Ukrainian border and the capital city of Russia, Moscow, is only 100 miles away. So that would be like the distance from Portland to Eugene. And after the Munich Security Conference over the weekend, that's when President Putin recognized those two break breakaway regions in Ukraine. When in Nora.